Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Good morning, markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN in beautiful Isla Morada, Florida for the week, folks. Uh, Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We start the day off in negative territory. You get the S&Ps down 27 points. NASDAQ 100 down about 25 points right now. That's only mo just more than a 10 percent drop on the NASDAQ 100. The Dow feeling the downside more so than the other indices. Uh, you're talking about a Dow right now down 277 points. That's eight tenths percent. And you have the Dow up 350 points off of the lows we got last night and the Russell continuing to be the one hardest hit. You got the Russell right now down almost a full percent. You're negative 21 points at 22.19. We jump to commodities right now. Commodities, currencies, Bitcoin, quite an acceleration from the lows we had on Friday. Bitcoin back near about 59,000 so far. Crude, though, look at the volatility on crude, challenging the lows we had on Friday after getting up to a price point of yesterday. You're talking about pushing almost 73 bucks. We're back at 60. 737 for the price of crude. We jump over to gold, which is up 13 bucks this morning at 1798. We jump to notes and bonds. Pulling this on my screen. I'm out on the beautiful balcony, folks, but uh, we got a lot of sun. A lot of sun this morning. So a little bit of glare on the screen, but we'll get through it. You have the 10 year right now. Look at the acceleration. We're up about 27 ticks. 131.03. Thursday's action had a 128 handle, and we push 130. 3110. Remarkable move right now in bonds. And we jump over to the VIX as we have some negative action last night. We're going to put it all in context in a moment. You have the VIX spiking to a high of about 27.50. We've back off, backed off a bit. Still quite a lofty level of a 25 VIX level right now. And what's it all have to do with? We jump over to the headline. Moderna's concerns about the new variant outlook spark market slump. One founder saying the mutation point uh, mutations point to a serious threat. Uh, the CEO out there uh, speaking as well, talking about, and I'm going to try to get the, the quote in here. Um, yeah. So you have Moderna striking a pessimistic tone that Pfizer chief executive officer saying earlier in, the, in an interview with Bloomberg that it will be clear in two to three weeks how well uh, – no, that is the Pfizer CEO. Uh, the Moderna CEO is the one who spooked the market in here completely. And I'll pull up that exact quote. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, just the seriousness of the threat. Nonetheless, so here's what we'll say about this, and we'll get the quote. Uh, you are listening to the CEO of a vaccine maker saying that the whole world's going to need more of their vaccine in three months. There's a definite conflict of interest with that data coming from the CEO of that company. Uh, doesn't mean it's wrong, but take that for what it's worth and take for what it's worth in terms of the vaccine will not be nullified, it looks like. Everything is an it looks like scenario when you're talking about a science that we're discovering as we go here, as we get new variants that are just discovered. But if you recall, when we first had the vaccines, to bring this into full context of the market, in my opinion, kind of overreacting here, is that the whole goal initially was to say the vaccines will only make a material impact if it's, say, 50 to 60 percent effective. We were very fortunate to get vaccines that at the onset were 90 to 95 percent effective. If the vaccines we have with the boosters are still providing a level of immunity that can keep us OK as we may be potentially get uh, a booster, the next round of boosters, has the material to address that specific variant. Uh, point being, this is nothing like the beginning of the 
pandemic, and the market is almost acting like it. When you get drops of one and a half to two and a half percent on mere comments of almost a worst case scenario situation, and it doesn't look like to be a best case scenario situation, as in the variant does look like uh, it is a cause for concern, and that more attention might be needed, but the market just drops out of bed at about midnight last night. Here's your S&P chart we're talking about from trading from 46.56 down to, at 1 a.m., a low of 45.82. We've bounced 40 points already from that low. We put the S&Ps on a daily to see the acceleration. We had quite a channel line that we were in for the better part of May all the way to September, we actually got back within that channel line on the beginning of November, sold off hard, okay, and this is what I'm going to look at, uh, to get out of there and really sold off hard as we touch that area. So kind of not what you want to see is you come back, you test the channel line, and man, you dive lower in a big way. But not sure that the market should be paying attention to the variant with this type of a reaction when you look at how quickly we give up so much in the market action. I mean, you're talking about September 2nd, folks. We have a high there of 45.44, zooming in on this action. Uh, is that the exact high? Yeah, 45.44, 45.49, so we'll call it 45.50. So we're within about 75 points of where we were trading almost three months ago as the market makes new highs at 47.40, and just like that, we give up about three months of action. Uh, what is also interesting today to keep your eye on is that you have Chairman Powell going to be speaking in front of the Senate. So he will have some questions, I'm sure. Uh, he'll probably do his best to steer clear of anything definitive, as he usually does. You have Treasury Secretary Yellen is going to join Powell on Tuesday and testifying before the Senate Banking Committee on Tuesday uh, to tell the Senate that the variant poses downside risk to the economy and complicates the inflation picture. It's just an added risk, folks, and there are a lot of risks in this market currently, and maybe that is the uh, catalyst that begins the selling. That is definitely possible, but I don't see it being a huge impact because even if there's something that it is providing more breakthrough cases, uh, I had already got my booster. I imagine there's many people who are vaccinated. If it becomes something that's clear and present that they could get a booster and a few months that might provide protection to this. I don't see that slamming down the economy to the tune. You're getting two and a half percent moves on Friday after Thanksgiving. You're getting what? We had the S&Ps down approximately 68 points last night on those news, almost in a heartbeat. And again, now Moderna shares, OK, to provide the full context, they are lower this morning. OK, so you have the CEO providing comments that their vaccine may need to be updated, Regeneron out there saying that it looks like the efficacy may wane a bit versus this new variant. But you also have the vaccine maker coming out and saying that everybody is going to need a new updated vaccine in three months. That seems like a pretty rosy scenario, especially when I saw one take on this. Uh, I believe I have this up here. Uh, that is the main headline. Um, talking about the founder saying the mutations point to a serious threat. But there's another one out here. I think it might have been a Bloomberg opinion piece. Uh, that is not it. Talking about... Nah, we'll get into all those. But talking about basically that this could actually be Moderna's chance to outshine Pfizer when they've kind of lost to Pfizer in terms of Moderna not living up to the outlook they've had recently. Uh, maybe they're going to use the new variant as a way to try and uh, up themselves in that race between themselves and Pfizer. Talk a little bit more about that. We'll be right back, folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 30 this morning. NASDAQ 100 negative by 37. You get the Dow now off 304. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time. Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups. Uh, Kevin Hicks, we have a lot happening since the last time we talked to you prior to Thanksgiving, man. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, quite the... Uh yeah, quite the uh, interesting turn of events here. But uh, who'd have thought if if you thought, Tommy, uh, that I said one four on the ten year before one seven, you'd have probably said, "How is that going to happen?" Well, that's how. Um, I think today is really interesting, Tommy, for several reasons. Number one, every morning U.S. traders wake up to foreign markets lower, which weigh on our futures, right? Now, take into that effect some of the news from Regeneron and uh, Moderna this morning that they, their vaccines are less uh, effective. And then you've got some comments from Jerome Powell that he's speaking today at his Fed chair speech. And all he can do, Tommy, is be cautious on this, right? No one's willing to take a flyer. No one's willing to predict what's going to happen. They have to be cautious. So the timing is not great. But that's making the markets a little jittery. But that said, Tommy, as I look at the markets, you know, today, and, I, and you know, we've talked about this se several times, you know, the NASDAQ is down less than two-tenths of a percent now. So even though the foreign markets were down pretty substantially and we're going to be lower, it looks like this is an opportunity with a 10-year at 1.4 to uh, take a hard look at some of these markets, Tommy. Uh, I love what you're saying, Kevin, and I agree with it. And we got, you know, this is my personal bias. You're adding your take on things, which is why we get you on the program and we love it. But I was having conversations, Kevin, even Thursday night, right, Thanksgiving, as things were starting to a little full, unfold a little bit. And uh, the market saw it was 1% down when our futures opened Thursday night, right? It was about 2.5% down when they opened for the half day somewhere in there on Friday. And we were kind of asking the same thing, being humble to the market, right? Seriously saying, you know, one friend literally said, you know, I, I, I never think I'm smarter than the market, but, and kind of laid out what you were saying in terms of, you know, I don't, is this 
did like going to change quality of life or business actions or actions that we're making um, for the economic purpose, being out and about traveling. Uh, and we just didn't see it, Kevin, you know, in terms of this is not a and, and at that point in the evening, Kevin, in the trading, it was only the worst of the worst uh, fear, worst case scenario tweets that were kind of out there about this new variant. Right. The WHO had. Uh, decided they were going to have a meeting on Friday. You had certain tweets coming out. And point being, it's like there's, there's, I just don't see the economic activity of a shutdown coming back to the point where, I mean, I don't know, Kevin, my dad and I were in the, the Keys this week. We're on vacation, right? You think about where we were when we were getting market sell-offs of 2.5% overnight, like the world was changing as it was early on the pandemic. I'm on vacation this week, man. You know, I'm still doing my job. My friends are out and about. We're traveling. Uh, so it's really interesting, the market reaction on, on any type of negative news when, in my opinion as well, I think it might be a little bit overblown, folks. And there are risks that are present, but we all know that, man. And that's like life in general. You know, there's always, always a worst case scenario, but the relevant risk of that level at this point, I think, is a little overblown when it's just not where we were anywhere near. I mean, Kevin, I thought this morning, right, in terms of what the uh, Moderna CEO said, it's like another way to say that is that, you know, it's a remarkable thing that they said we almost have a vaccine if we needed it that's ready in three months. We don't even know if that's the case and we'll have it ready. It's like you could put a positive spin in my mind. What, what do you think about all that I just talked about there with the VIX sitting at like 25 this morning even? Yeah, I uh I agree with everything you're saying, Tommy. I think uh, the overall effect on Americans being around is going to be minimal. Minimal. And so you look at a tenure that's now 1-4, and that makes stocks more attractive. And now let's be helpful here to your listeners. What's going to be lower today? Well, with a 1-4 tenure, Banks are going to be heavy. Banks and financials should be heavy. If you think the bond, the ten-year yield is going to stay at one four, or maybe go back high towards one six one seven, the banks are probably a good trade on the downside here. Anything that's interest rate sensitive, like banks and financials, anything that stores money will be heavy today because of lower yields. So there is something to look at, right? Plus, you already got a Nasdaq that is off its lows and e-minis that are off their lows. So this could be a good trading market. Just don't get sucked in by foreign markets that are weaker because, let's face it, their economy is not as strong as our economy. And they haven't done as good of a job with the vaccine, with, with, with you know, the COVID virus that we have. Yeah. So, yeah. Ours, you know, th this number that we're getting on Friday from non-farm payrolls could be another whopper, Tommy. And so that will get a precursor for that tomorrow morning when we get ADP. So, you know, I think this is an en enormous opportunity to participate in some of these names that are getting hurt today. That's why you got to be watching fast market, folks. And I agree, Kevin. I said the one thing, you know, if you have foreign exposure right now to Europe or some of those areas getting hit pretty hard, that's that's something that, that could hit you for sure. Uh, that's a different so animal, that, right. Yes, for sure. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, of course, we got, you know, Fed – uh, Chairman Powell, he'll be talking. Janet Yellen will be out there. We have the, the obvious stories that you guys may touch on. But what else are we talking about in the program coming up at 12 today, Kevin? Well, we're using the weakness in financials. We're, we're going to trade J.P. Morgan in the first segment of the show. Talk about it and, and put on a trade on J.P. Morgan. And then we're going to look at Salesforce. And then we're deciding, should we go Zscaler or, sh or we should go NCAP? So, we're probably the third uh, block will be Zscaler today. Nice. And those are two of my favorite stocks to start things off, man. J.P. Morgan Salesforce has been on a tear recently. Uh, their acquisition of Slack, right, going into effect. Uh, right. And Jamie Dimon, are you guys going to touch on Jamie Dimon talking about that he'll, he's going to outlast uh, the, the Chinese uh, party, Communist Party? I kid, but quite a story there, Kevin, right? And he, he pulls that back a little bit talking about China. Yes. I mean, you know, compliance, I'm sure J.P. Morgan, just like TD Ameritrade, has a large compliance department that I'm sure uh, said, uh, excuse me, sir, let's not say that <laughs> so much. But you can't talk about J.P. Morgan without talking about Jamie Dimon. Oh, a big, I mean, quite the leadership, man, that company. It's just, uh, I look forward to the program, Kevin. J.P. Morgan, one of the strongest banks out there for, uh, and yeah, Diamond, been at the top of that for a while. Kevin, man, we appreciate the education, the conversation, and we look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today, man.
Thanks for uh, having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, Kevin. Take care. Folks, tune in every trading day. Man, they got a lot to talk about today, and you heard it. J.P. Morgan, Salesforce, CRM. We have some Salesforce uh, in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options for Disclosure, but great company, Salesforce, integrating Slack uh, and accelerating. Let's pull up Salesforce because it has been. You look at the volatility, but, man, we take a look at Salesforce. You go back to uh, – let's go back a three-year weekly to see the full run here. You make it up to a high – Going back to August of 2020 of 278, quite a pullback, right? And look at this channel line that it has been in. You're going back to May. You're still within that channel line, folks. We got a weekly up. We'll take a little bit. Look, a look at this one on a daily. And uh, that's a channel line you like to see, folks. You talk about channel lines, right? Look at the way this thing bounces off the bottom of this channel line, even just recently. Uh, and, yeah, Salesforce, quite a day yesterday. You look at that bounce. You got to love channel lines. Oh, to our man, Bud Rolfs. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps now down just 24 points. NASDAQ 100 down just 21 points. Uh, look for those. Uh, imagine NASDAQ 100 might make a run to positive territory of the open. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets open. We got the S&Ps down about 29 points to kick things off. NASDAQ 100, you're talking about down just 48 points right now in the NASDAQ 100. Uh, come on. There we go. Let's get this out of here. There we go. Uh, looking at the action on a daily basis, I mean, you're talking about 16,000. 767 We're within about 400 plus points you're within three percent of an all-time high on the nasdaq 100 dow 
You're talking about, I'm not sure why these order entries keep popping up here. Oh, I'm hitting the bid or the ass. That's what I'm doing. Uh, Dow right now, trading 34,797. You're talking about down 268 points right now. Uh, and let's jump to Moderna. So Moderna, their CEO kind of starts this all. You're down 4.4% right now. All things considered, though, folks, to provide some context here, okay, Moderna, when you look at the date, you're talking about Wednesday is the 24th before Thanksgiving, okay? Wednesday, Moderna's trading at 270. You're $80 higher on this equity from a $270 equity, okay? What is that pushing? That's pushing about a 30% acceleration to the upside on the new variant concerns, okay? Then you have the Moderna CEO coming out, and really the, the lines there is that he predicted a material drop in the existing shots efficacy and damped expectations new ones could be ready soon. It seems like new ones can be ready in three to four months. That's what we have out there so far. And it seems like there could be a drop in the efficacy versus a new variant, as has been the case with the Delta variant. OK, uh, but a material drop even from the levels that they're dealing with, would still provide protection of some degree. This is not like it's just going away. Now, I say that because in the context of that they are going to make shots that will address these mutations in the current variant, and then they'll be able to say, once those shots are made, that everybody now needs a new shot. You just went from 270 to 350. It's up 30% since the Wednesday before Thanksgiving on this news. The idea that their CEO is at least has a conflict of interest to begin drawing attention to this new variant that might need new vaccines. I'm trying to stress that to at least provide some context of how I am considering those comments from the CEO. I don't imagine I'm not uh, building a conspiracy theory, okay, but I'm, I'm making sure that we're all aware of the conflicts of interest when you have the CEOs of vaccine companies stressing that this is going to go on forever and the new variants are, are very scary and, and we're going to work on the additional shots to get them done. Just keep that all in mind, folks. We have the S&Ps now down just 19 points. Uh, and let's jump over. Because as Kevin would say, if you have a long-term investment horizon, there are buying opportunities on this. Uh, and look at the S&Ps. I mean, we came right down to the lows. You're talking about a low of 45.77 yesterday, and we had a low of 45.82. You make it within five points of that low, and just like that, we've now taken off 46 S&P points. You're up a full percent from the lows as we look to trade higher, 46.28. NASDAQ 100 down just 37 points uh, as well. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. So we'll talk a little bit of retail. Amazon shares up about two-tenths percent today. Amazon, when you get into the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Cyber Monday on si online sales drop 1.4 percent from last year to 10.7 billion, falling for the first time ever. Interesting that you actually have Cyber Monday online sales dropping. Speaks to the level of online sales probably going on last year. If you back things up to November of 2020, that was prior to anybody really having access to the vaccines. Vaccines, the data started becoming available, if you remember, right around the election in November of 2020. Uh, so a much different world where we were a lot less comfortable shopping in stores uh, versus shopping online. But it's the first time that Adobe has tracked a slowdown in spending on major shopping days. Uh, still, Adobe expects the entire holiday season we'll see record-breaking e-commerce activity as shoppers spread out their dollars over more days i was talking about this a little bit yesterday too i did not buy anything on cyber monday yesterday uh we're on a beautiful vacation down in isla morada florida so i was a little bit busy as well taking care of business and then have a little fun as well um but there was no in there it, it didn't feel like a fear of missing out on a cyber monday like it usually does it feels like there's going to be discs uh deals abound and yes, there were probably some exceptional deals out there yesterday on certain items trying to draw people in. But you see it in the numbers. Uh, my sentiment is shared by some others as well. Uh, as I, I mean, I even know some companies actually did their Black Friday sales like a week ahead, some online retailers. And I wondered whether they were maybe trying to just beat the rush because everybody feels like there's a sale and maybe there might be some fatigue as you get later in the holiday season um, that sales don't mean as much as they used to when it's a sale 24-7, it feels like, across the board. Okay, what else do we have going on? Let's jump to 
natural gas, which they're talking about in the den. Uh, is it simply unwinding? Yeah, I'm not sure, Mike. Uh, natural gas sinks on track for the worst month in three years. So pulling up natural gas, getting down to these commodities. NG. Come on. It'd be nice if I could see my screen in the sunlight. There we go. Uh, natural gas was up to 550 when we ended Friday's action. You drop almost a dollar. You do drop a full dollar to lows. Now, putting this thing on a daily, <coughs> and that is quite a drop, folks. You are now below in natural gas, a definitive area of support. You go back to September of this year and you have a floor that it hit once in late september also bounced near that area in october chopped around near that area for basically the entire month of november and now you've accelerated through that area seems like the next stop on natural gas could either be 412 which is the highs there but maybe you're coming down to an area of probably 375 a little bit more uh around there as well let's jump to crude because the volatility in this crew contract we're going to talk to our man teddy kegstat tomorrow at 40 past the hour from forex dash trading dash on lock.com Always gives us a great take on the Forex market. He's been calling for $100 oil for a while. It has been quite a run. We got the real pullback here, though. You're talking about from 80 bucks down to 67 Now, when I talked to Teddy recently, uh, all things considered, yes, this is now quite a pullback when you go back to the run we had from August, okay, which was 62 bucks back to 85 You see that we've broken the 618. We're back to the 786. Maybe we do a full retracement, bringing us back down to about $61.70. Uh, but you take a little bit of a longer term, even going back a three-year weekly. My goodness, do you remember the consolidation we were in from about June and through, through November of last year, okay, a year ago, a year ago in November, you had crude starting off the month with a price handle of $33. So keep that in mind on this pullback because we are just double the price of where we were almost a year ago. Call it 13 months if you'd like, okay? You zoom in on that action. You go from about $33 and change. You had a slight pullback in March of this year. You top out in July you pull back. Now, for some context here, I'm going to add a drawing. I'm going to add a Fibonacci retracement for some context on these pullbacks. I mean, you're talking about from that high, we almost make it to the 382. And that is why maybe, you know, that area of $62 is the next stop. So that correlates to the 382 from our first move. Okay. And boy, if you want to talk about really where it can go, though, you do the whole run we had. From November of 33 bucks up to 85, you're talking about a 382 puts us, look at that though, puts us almost right where we're trading at. You're talking about a price level of about 65, 71 would be a full retracement of that move that we broke out of the consolidation in November. Uh, all things considered, I mean, those could be considered healthy pullbacks in this market, folks, if it's going to maybe make its way up to 100 bucks. And if the fears are overblown of the new variant, well, boy, that, that just took like 12 bucks off the price of crude. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down 25 points. NASDAQ 100 down about 32. The Dow just off 200 points now. We'll zoom in on a 15-minute chart for some closer action. You see the acceleration in the Dow. Basically, from the lows at about 4 a.m., we're trending higher, 34,861. We jump over to the strongest of the indices, NASDAQ 100, down, you're talking about just two-tenths percent, 16,354, and the S&Ps negative by 24. I'm going to jump over to Disney. So Disney continuing to trade lower on the fears of this new variant. Uh, so Disney does have some exposure, of course, overseas, where you're talking about movie theaters throughout Europe. You're talking about parks as well. You're talking about exposure to parks in the U.S. and movie theaters in the U.S. Uh, quite a pullback, folks, from 146. We do have Disney in my newsletter. We were trading at 155 last week. So even that, you're talking about losing nine bucks on that equity in that period. Now, I'm going to take a look first at the three-year weekly, okay? We are now below the 618 of the run that we had from last November. Really remarkable that this thing has pulled back that far. I don't need to tell you all that. You go back to the highs that we had in 2019, okay? We're now below prices that you traded at in terms of where we were in 2019 in Disney, which is remarkable when you think about, yes, it's been a max pain situation for Disney and the parks and the movie theaters, but the acceleration they've seen in Disney Plus over that time, pushing 118 million subscribers. I know I've created this case before, uh, but I am actually looking at possibly adding to my position in Disney, folks. If you don't have a position in Disney and you're willing to look to the long term, potentially for a year, maybe even a couple years, or longer. We don't know how this market behaves right now because it's definitely longer than you would have imagined. But to get on the complete other side of this virus where it's not dominating the news cycle like it has, uh, I imagine we're getting closer and closer to that point, folks, regardless of today's fears. Now, you put Disney on a 10-year weekly, okay? I mean, quite the run this thing had. Uh, you're going back to 2012 at 35 bucks. You run up to a high of 120 about. That's pushing 2015. Now, I bring it up, folks, because you're talking about coming back to levels that, number one, the next point is going to be 142.37, okay? That is the run that Disney had in April of 2019, and I bring that up in particular. Let's zoom in on the action because this is when Disney started to announce the details of the Disney Plus streaming service. Pretty sure. Let me walk through on that. Yes, it is. Uh, so that is where the market really starts to pick up acceleration. And you're now going back to a point where they've overachieved so dramatically. But 142 is going to be a point there because that is the first high that you got as everybody found out that Disney was going to undercut prices on Netflix, etc. We're going to back this out again. Now, what's remarkable is, I mean, you're talking about if you get back to a price of 120, folks, you're back six years in the price of Disney. That would be quite a pullback. 
that you're going to be going through a level of buying and selling there that is pretty remarkable when you talk about six years and you talk about the brands that Disney has incorporated. And this happened, you know, from 2012 as well. <clears throat> but you're approaching an area in terms of 120 that you could see some serious support because that was an area of resistance going from basically July of 2015 all the way to April of 2019. You think about the level of action that you talk about that long of a time frame, and I can't believe we're there, and I'm not sure we'll make it there, okay? But you could definitely start dabbling here when you're talking about down, what is it, 57 bucks now? You're down about 25% from the highs we had earlier this year. And, folks, it's going to happen. Disney's going to be putting out billion-dollar box office hits in the movie theaters again. Don't think that's not happening. Uh, they're going to have their parks rocking. I'm, I live in Florida. I live less than an hour away from Disney probably. got two small kids, and we have not gone yet because of the risks that are still present in big areas like that. Maybe we will soon. <coughs> Excuse me. Got something stuck in my throat. Excuse me. But the point being, that matters, and it's mattering to Disney's charts, and they're spending a lot of money on content right now. Um, but eventually, that stock will trade higher, folks. You saw the run that it had when the market thought that everything was going to go back to rosy pictures from November of the vaccines. We went from 120 to 200, and you're seeing uh, a large portion of that play out right now, where vaccines dominating the news cycle, Disney trading lower on the potential for lockdowns, restrictions, etc. cetera. Uh, California, you saw it happen during the pandemic. Not sure it would happen again, but it's definitely possible. Maybe some of that being factored in. Uh, they have action in Europe, of course, when they're releasing their movie th movies across Europe, across the whole globe. Um, but I just want to bring it up because, you know, yeah, it's quite an underperformance to the market this year, With uh, goes without saying. But when you start getting back into levels that you're talking about levels for the better part of August of 2015, a six year retracement, a six year plus retracement, we're almost in 2022, folks. And you think about the way Disney has transformed that business dramatically to be a streaming giant in the better part of basically just two years. Uh, I imagine we're talking about a company right now valued about two hundred and sixty six billion dollars right now at the price. You know, with inflation going through the roof, folks, do you really see Disney coming down to be a company valued at $200 billion, $190 billion? That's important in the context of inflation in a company like that uh, approaching a $200 billion valuation, um, which I just see being undervalued when you put everything else in play. But the market's never wrong, and the market is saying right now that this company is worth $266 billion. It's saying that it's worth 25% uh, less than they thought it was worth in March, and uh, and that's what matters most. So uh, make sure that you're willing to take on that risk because Disney has been paying the price recently for sure. Okay, jumping around to what else we have going on. Let's jump down to some of the stocks that are moving today. Uh, we talked about Regeneron. We talked about Moderna. Dollar Tree, the run they have had, probably a little too much recently. That's what Goldman Sachs is saying. As they downgrade them, basically uh, saying the stock's too expensive at the current levels as their comeback story, which is occurring, is already priced in. And, yeah, this is quite a story, folks. Dollar Tree. So what are you down? You're down about 2.6% today. Now, that's a 10-year weekly. There's a 10-year weekly for you. Look at the run this thing has had just over the period of two months. From 85 bucks up to 137, you were just at 149. You put it on a daily for a little bit more context. You jump from 84 to almost 100, and the run continues to 137. Now they just jacked their prices up 25 percent. Seems like the market knew that was probably coming. It comes. The stock trades to 149, and it's a usual case of buy the rumor, sell the news. Uh, you could have bought the fact that they were going to be raising those prices but the moment they actually raise them the market says thanks for doing what we kind of expected and the valuation is already built into this equity of dollar tree right now giving back some of those gains but still pretty remarkable when you can raise prices 25 percent across the board and you're probably dealing with some of the more price conscious shoppers that exist when you're literally shopping at a store where the price is in the name of the store which is dollar you are obviously price conscious you're probably much more conscious of every dollar spent because of budgeting needs just because of the availability and they're jacking up prices 25% and the market's saying yeah a dollar 25 still 
is pretty meaningless in the grand scheme of inflationary tendencies and not hurting how much they're selling in Dollar Tree, just trading higher in a big way. Pay attention to that one, folks. And let's jump over to Tesla. We haven't taken a look at yet. Tesla up 1.6% at 11.55. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got one more segment. We'll be coming back for three minutes to finish up the show. S&P's negative by 35. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, billable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got the 10 year up right now. You're talking about trading up 26 ticks, folks. You're talking about almost a full point. The 10 year is up right now, trading at 131.03. We had a 128 handle on the 10 year as recently as last week, as I was talking to our man Kevin Hinks at 9 15 a.m. this morning, talking about the move in yields. We're now at 1.429, 1.43%. The yield on the 10 year, quite a move, as he was saying, man. Would we see a 1.43 before we see a 1.47? Now, the thing I bring up uh we are within a channel line and yes you accelerated lower but man we break back within that channel line in a big way it would be remarkable if you make it to the top portion of that you're talking about almost near 133 in the 10 year so that would be a full two points additional we trade higher but you better believe it's possible when you get in this type of move folks i mean who would have thought that it was possible back in april 
right? When you had yields, uh, maybe on their way to 1.6, 1.7, everyone was talking about would we see 2%? And just like that, you had quite the pullback into August in terms of pullback in yields. Uh, doesn't mean you can't see it again. I mean, we traded from a price point, folks. If you recall, in April with a 130 handle all the way up to where we were in August where you pushed a 135. Look at that move. All right. So don't think you can't see it as you see some rising yields, because, man, that is quite a pop we just got in terms of uh, decreasing yields. I should say rising price in the 10 year right now as we're up almost a full point at 13102. And as they're talking about uh, and as our man Kevin Hicks was talking about, of course, some of those yield sensitive stocks being hit the most. J.P. Morgan, they'll be talking about down 1.2 percent. They're talking about Verizon as well. Strong company. Uh, I have some Verizon. My mom has some Verizon. She worked for them for disclosure. Strong company, though, especially when you talk about dividends up 1.4. Uh, down 1.4%. Bank of America right now down 1.5%. You pull up Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo down almost 2% today on that news. They'll be talking about J.P. Morgan on the program at Fast Market at noon. Now, you look at J.P. Morgan. We put it on a three-year weekly. You're talking about J.P. Morgan is back to basically almost where we were in March. And not even basically. We were trading at a 161 price point. You back it up even further, okay? You're talking about J.P. Morgan was almost at 140 back in January. We're trading at 160, and that's after going from 76 to 172, and that was January of 2020, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in, starting your day. Stay tuned. Basil's live up next. Larry at 11, Fast Market at 12, Steve Rode, Dave White, Tom O'Brien's live at three. My dad. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.